This is not a red bike. It's not my BMC road machine, as a lot of you have noticed. A bike that I once called the best in the world. In fact, I said, if I could only ride one bike for the rest of my life, this is that bike. But this is not that bike. So what happened? Let me introduce you to the Rita Esprit. And yes, this is my new bike. But no, this is not a first impression video because I've already put about a thousand miles or 1500 kilometers on this thing. So I can tell you exactly why I'm riding this more than my BMC these days. I have a lot of good memories on my road machine. My first century, learning how to install a group set, and of course, riding up some of the steepest streets in the world. So to say I was conflicted when I started riding the Rita is an understatement. It would have been a lot easier to give the demo bike back if I wasn't enjoying it so much. Honestly, the only word you need to know about this bike, oop, pothole, responsive, oop, that's not the word. The word is fun. Dude, this thing is just like a blast. It wants to go, but you can also take it on long rides. My very first ride on this thing was on this loop here in LA called the Circle of Doom. And as you would expect from a name like that, it's a big ride. I think it's like 120 miles, 1200 feet of elevation. It was an all day ride. And of course, I rode with EJ from EJ Trains and he's way stronger than me. So, dude, I was cooked by the end of it. But I'm really glad I was on this bike for a couple reasons, actually. Number one, a few weeks before that ride, I was out on my road machine riding with a friend through Griffith Park and um, the front derailleur all of a sudden had an electronic malfunction where it pushed the chain off the chain ring. I sent the derailleur in for warranty. They did send me a new one. Originally, they sent me an 11 speed and then I had to send that back. And then they sent a 12 speed. But by the time that came, this circle of doom ride was coming up. Uh, I didn't have my bike ready in time. And while I could have done the ride on Barney, the gravel bike I had last year from the pros closet, Barney is a lot slower than the road machine. In fact, I hit my all time best power on a climb in my local group ride on Barney but I was still half a minute slower than I was on the road machine. And I was doing like an extra 10 or 15 watts. So I knew if I brought Barney to this ride with EJ, <laughs> I'd have no chance. So there I was a couple days before the ride, unsure of what to do, surfing Instagram as you do, when I saw this bike. It's a good looking bike and let's be honest, as a YouTuber, that is an important metric. But the prettiest bike in the world is worthless if it doesn't perform well. The road machine never held me back. In my Dirty Dozen video, you can see how well it handles every type of road surface from smooth, flat tarmac to steep, cobbled climbs. A solid, consistent bike that helped me progress from a beginner to an above average cyclist. Yet, as great as it is, it is an endurance bike. And part of me always wondered if I would be a little better on a race bike. So when I found the Rita Esprit and read the tagline, a race bike for every day, I was intrigued. 24 hours later, I was deep down the rabbit hole, ravenously consuming anything I could find on Rita and the Esprit. I had read James Wong's review at least half a dozen times and watched the entirety of Ben Delaney and Outdoor Bros review videos at least twice. Probably more like five or six times. The consensus was overwhelmingly positive. One of the most intriguing lines that I found in my research was by a guy named Casper Vogt, who said, it's 103% better than what you think it will be. Chris from Outdoor Bros told me the team at Rita was really cool and recommended I reach out to see if I could ride one of their demo bikes. He actually offered to connect me, but I was so excited I had already sent the email halfway through our conversation. And just like that, I had a demo bike for the Circle of Doom ride. Now, it was just up to my legs 
to survive. Maybe 120 miles was a little long for the first ride on a bike I had never even touched, especially since the Esprit is not an endurance bike. I was putting a lot of trust in their marketing copy, a race bike for every day. Lucky for me, it wasn't just marketing copy, it was legit. The ride was epic, and as expected, EJ absolutely ripped my legs off. The next day, my muscles were demolished, but my back, which usually is what acts up on long rides, was totally fine. In fact, I was shocked by how comfortable the bike was. So comfortable that I forgot I was riding a new bike for most of the ride. Maybe not the right word. Invisible? The bike kind of disappears underneath you. I'm not a bike reviewer, okay, so I'm kind of struggling with finding the words. I guess the best way I could describe this bike, it's like, you know in cartoons where there's an angel on one side and a devil on the other? That's his bike, it's got both. So on one side, it's like, let's just chill. And the other one's like, let's go. You know, like, it's so fun. As you can tell, I hated the bike and immediately sent it back to Rita. I definitely didn't act like a guy who got too excited after a first date and texted them right away the next day asking if they'd be interested in sponsoring me. Over the next few weeks, I tested the bike on my group ride, basic zone two training rides, and plenty more epic rides in the mountains around LA. And I had a smile the whole time. The crazy thing is, that little bit where I described the angel and the devil, I didn't record that when I first started riding the bike. That was just two days ago. I've now been riding the bike for months. I put over a thousand miles on it and it's still exciting. And yes, I did put on the same outfit to record this for continuity, but I've now ruined that by telling you about it. But at least my sponsors will be happy I'm wearing their products. That's YouTube, baby. Okay, back to specifics. Let's talk about before I just do it. I'm just having fun. So the frame is stiff, but not so stiff that, you know, your back hurts at the end of the ride. It's not as comfortable as the road machine. I don't know if any performance road bike is as comfortable as the road machine, but the, the trade-off for me of like a little extra comfort versus a little extra like kick Dude, I love it. When I was first talking with the team at Rita, you know, I told them like, I love my road machine. I really love this bike too. But I don't want to be like, oh, my road machine is a terrible bike. And this bike is the greatest bike. You know, that's really disingenuous. And to their credit, Elijah, who runs the brand over there, he's like, why would you do that? You know, it's a great bike, the road machine. It's probably the best bike for a lot of people. He's like, our bike is great too. And I love that about Rita. Like there's just a confidence in their product, which is warranted. Their whole motto is bikes for fun and glory. And dude, they've nailed the fun part. The glory part, I think I'd have to be a better rider. Depuis que je suis rédacteur... Come to attention that a new bicycle manufacturer called Rita von Vlandering has released a bicycle that violates the spirit of fair competition. It can provide an unfair aesthetic advantage. Riders in the peloton may be distracted by the handsome design, which is no less than psychological doping. We try not to take ourselves too seriously, but we are very serious about the product. As a very serious person, I was deeply offended by the lighthearted way that Rita critiqued the culture of the cycling community. There is nothing inherently funny about a bunch of middle-aged dudes wearing spandex chasing each other. And while Rita has unfortunately maintained their sense of humor, I was glad to see that they've grown into a high-quality bike manufacturer whose bikes ride just as good as they look. I mean, now is kind of the golden age of buying a bicycle. It's, it's really, really hard to find something that, that isn't a good bike, right? So for us, it's, it's interesting because the product needs to be more differentiated and more well thought out than ever. Ride quality and, and ride feel has kind of always been the number one aspect that we shoot for, uh, more so than weight, uh, more so than really any perceived numerical values. If you look at 
the bike model as one model with six sizes or eight sizes or whatever, however many you're doing, you end up trying to create a, a bike that does everything well for everyone, but that's not really the case. Whereas if we're looking at this bike and say a size small, which is a 53 centimeter, you know, we want to build the best 53 centimeter road bike we can build. And even the medium, which is a 55 centimeter, is its own distinct bike, right? It's got different tube profiles. It's got completely different geometry uh, with different rear end lengths, different bottom bracket drop. It's got a completely different layup schedule and package. And, um, you know, we're not constraining ourselves to, to make something for the 53 and the 58 work together. They're, they're distinct, which I think as an approach is probably more expensive than uh, many other production bikes. But at the same time, I we want every rider to have the same experience, which is that for their size, weight, balance, whatever, the, the bike disappears beneath them. Let's see if I can talk loud enough for this. Let's talk about the bike, front to back, while we're kind of cruising here. So obviously first is the front wheel and the rear wheel, they're both the same brand. Other, it's Rena's in-house brand. If I had to choose the wheels or the frame, and I could only have one, ah, it'd be tough. It'd be tough to decide. Because the wheels are just the right depth, in my opinion. You don't get blown around on a windy day, but they do have a nice aerodynamic advantage. They make that cool whooshing sound while you're riding. But the best part is they have a pretty wide internal rim width. So I've got the Vittoria Corsa X tires on here. They're 28s, but inflated and on this wheel, they're almost 30s. I don't know if you heard that bit, so I'm just gonna say it again. They're almost 30 and they're super cushy. I'm running them at like 55 up front and 60 in the rear. I'm like 77 kilos, 170 pounds. Man, it's like riding on a cloud. These tires do have a, uh, bit of a reputation because they're cotton tires but that's why I put silica sealant in them and uh, since switching to silica I haven't had any issues with uh, punctures that don't seal because that's how good the silica sealant is. I am a silica ambassador but I would use it anyway. In fact this year for the first time I have several year-long sponsorships, ambassadorships, whatever you want to call them which is very exciting, very lucky to have these opportunities. Um, so Silka, Sun God, glasses, attacker for kit, Rita for bikes. And I bring it up because I'm in a really fortunate position where I can choose the partners that I wanna partner with for these year long partnerships. And I can honestly say these are all companies that if I wasn't a YouTuber or I didn't have partnerships, I would have bought their products anyway. I reached out to Rita. I reached out to Attacker. I reached out to Silka. Sun God reached out to me and I was shocked, but I tried to play it cool. I feel proud. I feel lucky. I feel grateful to you to have these high quality sponsorships with products I fully endorse. So thank you for watching my videos and trusting my recommendations. I can't believe this is my life. Okay, so let's move up from the wheels to the bar stem. This bar stem is also from Other, Rita's in-house brand. It's my first fully integrated, like single piece bar stem. I was on Envy Aero Bars and the Aero Stem before, which were great. This is a little stiffer, which is nice for putting down a little power. It's also kind of like more of a traditional shape. It doesn't flare out super wide. I do have my levers turned in to a UCI illegal rate because I wish they were just a little narrower. I have very narrow shoulders. Like I wear a 38 long for my suit jacket. So 38 mil, mil, 38 centimeter handlebars are really what I prefer. The Envy's were uh, 37 at the tops and those felt really good. Lucky for me, there may or may not be a uh, 38 centimeter option coming soon to the Rita website. So I might be UCI legal again sometime soon. This is probably a good time to interject and talk about the bike fit I had and the customization I did to the bike 
to make it my own. You see, once we decided we were gonna work together, chatting with the team at Rita, we realized that um, because of some exciting things coming later this year, rather than build up a brand new bike, which would be almost identical to the demo bike I was riding, it would be better to just update the demo bike. Carla at InCycle Pasadena helped me with a bike fit. This was my first in-person fit, and it was awesome. I learned so much, including how inflexible I am. There weren't a ton of changes to my position, but the changes she did make have had a big impact. First off, I have surprisingly narrow sit bones. We had to measure several times because we thought the measurement <laughs> device was malfunctioning. Carla got me set up with a saddle that works really well for me. It's the Specialized Power Arc. Unlike other power saddles, the sides on the power arc curve down, which works really well for my narrow sit bones. I also got some custom insoles, which feel pretty great. But the biggest revelation has been the change to my cleat position. I literally had the cleats pointing the wrong way for me. I had my feet pointing out because that's how I walk like a duck, but she had me point my toes in to improve my leg tracking. First right after the fit, I was putting out an extra 20 watts in zone two because I forgot to calibrate my power meter. I haven't noticed any extra power since the bike fit, but I have noticed a difference in how it feels to pedal with this new cleat position. It took a ride or two to get used to, but now I really, really like it. And riding out of the saddle is a lot more, like it, it feels more solid now because my knees were kind of wobbling around looking for a place to be, and now my legs line up really nicely both in and out of the saddle, which I guess is how it's always supposed to be. As far as bike component changes go, she recommended narrower handlebars, which we kind of already talked about. Those will be here soon. And she also put me on shorter 170 millimeter cranks. In addition to Carla's bike fit recommendations, I had a few things I wanted to change on the bike. SLF Motion sent me a ceramic bottom bracket and oversized pulley wheel, which I was very excited to get on there. I've never had either of those things on a bike before, and I'm looking forward to seeing if I notice a difference. They also sent me these cool lock rings to match, which work perfectly with the Galfer rotors, which I have adored for a while now. They're light, they're thick, they're great. And because the Esprit uses a standard 27.2 millimeter seat post, I wanted to splurge a little bit and get a lightweight upgrade. Just because I've never had a super lightweight bike before, and I found this one from Mount Zoom. It's not crazy expensive like other lightweight seat posts, and so far it's been great. And paired with the carbon saddle, I have to say I do notice a difference in the bike's feel and weight when I stand up out of the saddle and push the bike around. The spree itself is pretty light, but it's not just the weight, it's where they put the weight. For example, the bottle cages are set lower than most frames, which puts the center of gravity lower, so when you're putting down power, the bike feels both solid and light because of how it moves. Again, I'm not a bike reviewer, this is just how the bike feels to me. While we're talking about being out of the saddle, SRAM. Weird segue, but bear with me. This is my first time riding SRAM on a road bike, and yeah, there's the chain drop stuff. I did experience some of it, but honestly, my Shimano group set dropping a chain is what started all of this, so that argument's kind of a wash to me. I've read shifting is a little slower. Maybe I'm not sensitive enough. I don't notice a difference compared to the Shimano 12-speed Di2 I was riding before. The hoods, I did not like the hoods. I don't have big hands. I wear a size medium in gloves, and they just kind of feel clunky. However, they have been growing on me, especially when I'm out of the saddle, because they feel similar to the drops. The internet's made fun of me for climbing in the drops before. I'm sorry, it just feels natural to me. And the SRAM hoods actually feel pretty good when sprinting up a climb out of the saddle. I think they just, like, they feel more solid to me than the Shimano. And I'm hoping the next generation of SRAM hoods can hold on to that solid feeling while also being a little more ergonomic because, yeah, they do still feel a little too big for me. I am still getting used to the different gear sizes on SRAM compared to Shimano. We put a 4633 chain ring and a 10 to 33 cassette on the bike because I wanted that one to one ratio with the 3333 for steep streets. But uh, after riding around a bit, I think I'm gonna swap it out for a bigger chain ring because I'd like to have a little more top end, especially for sprints and my ego. But my favorite upgrade we made is the waxed chain. The day before the rebuild, I stripped the chain, waxed it, 
gave the drivetrain a, a deep clean, all with Silco's products, sponsor plug. If you haven't lived that wax chain life yet, oof, I'll just say this. It is not as hard as it looks and the payoff a quieter, longer lasting, cleaner drive chain is more than worth it. Cleaning your bike with a wax chain is the easiest thing in the world. It's just soap and water. There's no scrubbing down the chain with degreaser and worrying you're gonna contaminate your disc brakes. If I could only do one of these upgrades, you better believe it would be the waxed chain. You may be thinking, wait, Mitch, you made a bunch of upgrades, which makes it different from the stock bike on the website, and that's not fair, man. But here's the cool thing. And yes, I am sponsored, and I'm a Rita fanboy now, but I think anybody can appreciate this. When you order a bike from Rita, you can go with one of their stock setups, but you can also customize the bike as much as you want. The stock setup is not a base level setup, it's a premium setup, but you've probably been riding for a while, and if you're a nerd like me, you probably have some preferences. When you order, you'll get an email, and if you want, a call too, likely from Elijah, who will make sure your bike is built exactly the way you want it. These days, road bikes cost a lot of money. You know, if, if our stock saddle works awesome for you, great. If it doesn't, um, you know, we'll swap it out, right? Uh, and, and that kind of thing, I think, is just the right way to do it at this level of, of bike there's no reason to be buying something that doesn't work for you out of the box i don't know why uh, like why is this not normal the frame is pretty light i don't know exactly how much this one weighs it's a large their medium is supposed to be like under 800 grams i'll tell you this this full build we weighed it, it was like 15 pounds 10 ounces i think which is just over seven kilos. So it's light and it's fast. But best of all, it's stiff. That's what she said. I've lost track of the number of PRs I've set while on this bike. It's obviously lighter than my road machine. And I think it's more aero too. Look, I'm not a wind tunnel. And maybe it's just because I can get into a better aero position on this bike. Or maybe it's the fully integrated cables. Maybe it's the wheel and tire combo. I don't know. But what I do know is that I'm faster, not just on the climbs, but also on the flats. And I've got the Strava receipts to prove it. I'm consistently going faster for the same level of effort. Don't get me wrong. I love my road machine. It was the best bike in the world for me at that time in my cycling journey. The precise Swiss engineering and ride quality as I focused on improving my fitness and found my place in the sport was exactly what I needed. But for where I am now, there's something even better. Over the years, I had a gravel bike because I liked to mountain bike when I was younger. I do all these sweet jumps, man. Oh. Then I got a road machine because it's an endurance bike. And now I have a lightweight bike. It lets me race up hills. And this is the reason why I really like this bike. I'm sure the camera is horrible right now, but I'm cruising up Nichols Wall in Hollywood. And this thing just like floats up it. Whereas my last two bikes, once I got going, they were good. This thing doesn't take a lot to get going. It just picks up and goes. And dude, it's so fun. So fun. You know, a theme in a lot of my videos is that sometimes I forget to have fun. I'm so focused on training or making a video that, you know, I get burned out. And the nice thing about this bike is like, I love this bike not because of the wheels, not because of the handlebars, not because of the frame. It's the whole package. The Gestalt, which is a really snobby word to describe such a down-to-earth bike. The truth is, this bike is just fun to ride, and that's why I love it. I was supposed to turn the other way, but... <laughs> 
if I had to bring up a problem with this bike, it's that. Dude, it just itches to go. It's like always ready, which is a little bit of a problem because my body's not always ready.